Hi, I'm Nicole Aronson. I'm a pediatric otolaryngologist, also known as an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a diagnosis called vocal cord dysfunction. This is a diagnosis I see a lot of in my voice clinic, so it's near and dear to my heart. The old name for vocal cord dysfunction, which although not totally accurate, I actually think is easier to understand, was paradoxical vocal fold motion. So in a normal person, when you're breathing in, your vocal cords are going to come apart, making a large V, allowing air to get into your windpipe. And when you're talking, your vocal cords are going to come together, which is what allows you to make the variety of sounds needed for speech. In vocal cord dysfunction, when the vocal cords should be coming apart to breathe, they are staying more midline than they should and not allowing to enough air to get in. There's a certain type of patient who usually suffers from vocal cord dysfunction. This is generally a very high functioning type A personality, female athlete in the teenage years. These tend to be girls when I ask them in clinic what their average grades are, they say things like, oh, I get all A's of course. They are very dedicated competitive athletes and they tend to get symptoms during their sports. Some of them get them during practice and competitions. Sometimes it will be isolated to competitions and the symptoms present in vocal cord dysfunction tend to be a very hard time getting air in, a feeling of tightness or pain in the throat right about here. Sometimes there are prodromal symptoms where the person will know the symptoms are going to start. There can be a bad taste in the mouth, often described as a taste of blood. Um, usually they can stop the symptoms by stopping their activity, although oftentimes when they go back to practice, they run into the same symptoms again sooner than they did the time before. Often vocal cord dysfunction can be misdiagnosed for a long time. These are generally people who have gone through multiple specialties. They could be cardiology, allergy, pulmonary, and kind of had normal testing throughout. Often they're put on inhalers for potential exercise-induced asthma, and they report no benefit from these symptoms. These tend to be relatively anxious People, when you ask them, they usually will describe a fair amount of anxiety that goes along with their symptoms. And when they're having their symptoms, they have a strong sense of doom because they feel like they can't breathe. The diagnosis of vocal cord dysfunction requires that the voice box be examined and that it look normal. It is unusual when doing a flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy in the office to actually trigger the symptoms, although sometimes this is done by exercising the patient prior to the scope to try to trigger an episode. The treatment for vocal cord dysfunction is based on speech therapy. It is basically kind of retraining the brain on how to breathe and get out of these episodes. They explore various techniques like pursed lip breathing and other breathing exercises, diaphragmatic breathing to get the patients through these episodes. And sometimes they will even engage in the patient's sport with them while they are doing this training to help them be able to kind of in the situation use the breathing skills that they've learned. So vocal cord dysfunction is a common issue. It's often kind of misdiagnosed and takes a long time for patients to get to a true diagnosis. But the good and bad thing is that it requires effort from the patient through speech therapy to get over the symptoms. The patients who are kind of motivated athletes usually do extremely well with speech therapy because they are willing to commit to be better at their game and so they tend to do really well. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments and if you have any suggestions for further topics, please leave them there as well and please subscribe to Dr. Nicole Knows.